Let's look at number one. Very carefully, let's look at number one. Hallelujah. Amen. Number one, the Bible declares, and let's find it in Luke, the 23rd chapter. Luke, the 23rd chapter, verses 42. Now, we're not in a hurry. In fact, we're gonna, the church is providing a wonderful meal today. So rest assured that we're going to have a wonderful time after this. But listen, right now we're having the greatest meal ever given to us. Amen. It was designed for, for you to be here this morning. It was designed for God to bring you here. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice what it says in Luke, the 23rd chapter. Do you remember the, there was two of the guys that were put on the cross next to Jesus on Mount Calvary? You see those pictures of three crosses, Jesus in the center, and then to the right and to the left are two murderers and thieves. You see what I'm saying? One was just a, an out, out brash, brash, prideful thief that was going to die, but the next one was really serious about something. He said, Jesus. Now, notice what he says in verses 23. I want you to see or, or chapter, chapter 23, verses 42. Are you there? And he said, Jesus. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, this is Jesus. Now get a hold of what Jesus said. Truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Two different places right here. Kingdom, paradise. Not the same thing. He knew that Jesus, according to the scripture, according to what he heard, that Jesus would build a kingdom. He knew that. Many believe that he would make a kingdom on earth. Many of the Jews that follow Jesus. In fact, when they, when they worshiped Jesus coming into Jerusalem, they thought that they were going to be set free because he came to rule. He was going to rule the kingdom of Israel. But that's not what he said. Jesus said, and he said, truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, what is paradise? Paradise. If we study the Bible very clearly, and I know this is paradise. And listen, I, I want you to think about something. Many of us here today, many that are watching, you're going to get some challenges brought to you, theological challenges. Because see, uh, many believe there's still a paradise. Many believe. Because they believe that this place, paradise, according to this place, Jesus told the thief, you'll be with me in paradise. But we have to see something about this paradise in order for us to understand that it's only not what Jesus said. He said it's a kingdom, N not paradise, but he says, I'm going to a kingdom, two different places. Say with me, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is the place that we're talking about. Kingdom of God is right now the way of living. You have a way of living in this kingdom right now. We're people of the kingdom of God. I have a way of living right now, and that's the kingdom way. Jesus said, seek, ye me for, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. What does the kingdom of God mean? Seek my way of living, and all these things will be added unto you. So in other words, right now, we seek the way of God's way of living. Right now on earth. One day you will be with the kingdom of, of heaven one day. You, you will be with Jesus one day. Hallelujah. Amen. But right now we're enjoying living here on earth from the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. You may say, Pastor, this world's an awful world. Yes, it is. But as a believer, I love what Jesus is doing in my life here on this earth. It can be getting dark all around me. It can be getting sad all around me. But me, for me, and you that love Jesus, it's getting brighter and it's getting brighter. Come on. And it's getting brighter and it's getting brighter and and it's getting brighter. The darker it gets, the brighter we become. Hallelujah. Amen. So, don't, so we shouldn't be like the world. Hallelujah. Amen. All fidgeting and scared and worried about tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. But I notice this paradise, we'll see it in Luke, the 16th chapter. Now, we have to see this so that we can move on. Hallelujah. Amen. The 16th chapter. This is, this is the story of a rich man. And a, and, and a poor man named Lazarus. But I want you to see the key points here for us to understand why Jesus said to that man on the cross that today you will be with me in paradise. Let's look at this for a moment. Amen. 16th, uh, Luke 16, are you there? We're learning the word of God. Say with me, I'm learning. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. And this is nothing new. This is just reaffirming our faith, stirring us up. Many of us know this, but many of us, are, are, it's new to us. But let's look at it for the first time. Hallelujah. Amen. I like to read the Bible like I've never read it before. 
I'm hungry for the Word of God. Amen? Luke 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Rich man. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Not the same Lazarus that Jesus resurrected, but this is another name. Amen? There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. So in other words, he was laying at the gate of the rich man. The poor man could not go where the rich man was. Say with me, amen. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So in other words, he's telling you how sick this man was and how poor he was. Amen. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Say with me, died. died. Dead. Died. Dead. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So he died, died and was buried. One died and was carried. The other one died and was buried. Say it again. One died and was carried. And the other one died and was buried. Very, very, very interesting here. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice what he says. And in hell... In hell, the word Hades, this hell is not the lake of fire that we know of in the end time of Revelation. It's hell. It's not the lake of fire. Say with me, the lake of fire. Now, the lake of fire is a permanent place, but hell is a temporal place. Hell is a temporal place, and the lake of fire is a permanent place. Now, notice this. And we don't have time to talk about uh, when you and I die, and we're judged before the Lord, or the unbelievers judge, what awaits them. You know that according to the Word of God. Amen. We're not going to talk about that, but we know that according to Scripture. And we shall talk about that in the days to come if the Lord allows us. Amen. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. He lifted up his eyes, the rich man, being in torment. This is hell, torment. The rich man in hell, in being in torment. And seeth Abraham far off. And Lazarus in his bosom. So in other words, Abraham, he saw Abraham per, uh, uh, related to a place far off. In other words, the rich man is in hell, but he saw a place where Abraham was, and he had this Lazarus in his bosom, but it was a far off place. He saw from a far off place. Let's talk about something. He's dead. How can he see? He's dead. How can he see? That means that inner man that did not serve Jesus, which is his soulish realm that never became born again to have the Spirit of God, now sees this place far away. Do you see? Do you starting to see something here? Let's look at something. Let's look at something here. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that when the Holy Spirit teaches us. Amen. And the, and the Bible says this. And he cried and said, he said, he, he talked. Father Abraham, talking to that place far off, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus, the, the man that you carried, send him that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Hell has flame, but it's not the lake of fire. Hell has flame. But it's not the lake of fire. But Abraham said, and listen to what Abraham said, son, son, I love that about Jesus, son. He says, remember thou in the lifetime receiveth thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Two different places. And verse 26, this is what Jesus said. Now get a hold of Jesus said this. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which could, would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they come, pass to us that would come from thence. Now, we can read, in fact, let's just read, it says, verse 27, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, the living, 
I have five brothers that are living that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment, hell, where there's fire, temporary place. Abraham said unto him, listen what Abraham said unto him. Jesus speaking, Abraham said unto him, but, Mo, but he says, they have Moses and the prophets, lest them hear them, let them hear them. And he said, nay, father, no, father, Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one that rose from the dead. Wow, there's so, it's so much there. It's so much. There's so much there. But the focus is this, that place that Jesus is talking about. Jesus knew this place existed. Jesus knew when he told that man on the thief, today you will be with me in paradise. See, the key that Jesus knew was the moment he died and gave up his spirit to the Lord, that very moment Jesus entered this place where this rich man was. And this is what it's called the waiting place. Say with me, the waiting place. Now notice, it's, it's quite seriously, if you and I were to die today without Jesus, and you don't have Jesus, and it's, a quite, it's, quite, it's quite shaking when you realize it. When, you know, when I was without Jesus, and I would hear this, it, it would, yeah, it would kind of just get a hold of me, but not really make sense. But now that I know the truth, when I hear this, and if somebody is an unbeliever that is hearing this right now, man, I would get my life right, right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because this is that temporal place that we're talking about right now. If somebody was to die without Jesus, without Jesus, without Jesus, without Jesus, without Jesus. Listen, listen. According to the Word of God, hell is a place where this person goes. Now notice this. It described this place. There's a great fix. I cannot go over there. Listen, once that happens, you cannot go to where you want to go. It's too late. And the thing about that, there's torment. The Bible says torment, so we don't have time to talk about torment. But, but if there's torment, I don't know. The other day I was changing a light bulb and I got a burnt on my finger. That thing hurt. Don't ever change a light bulb that, that is a condensate light bulb. That thing is hot like fire. I reached to change it thinking it's a regular bulb and literally it sizzled. I literally, it, I felt the pain, the pain. Listen, I got a burnt mark right there, amen. I got a burnt mark. Listen, listen. Has anybody had a little kid try your daddy's cigarette lighter in a car and you hit that thing and that thing you pulled it out and turned glowed red and you just put your finger in there. Woo! Hallelujah, amen. You smell the skin and you see all the, the, the you see all the, the, you've been branded. You see what I'm saying? Hallelujah, amen. I don't know about that, but that hurts. That was a little pain on my finger. Amen. But think about this place, this place, this place. Now it's reality. But the point is, number one, he went to this place, and we call it paradise. Now notice this. Let's look at paradise for a moment. Paradise is a temporal place. And this place, paradise, if we could look at it very closely, uh, it, it's a place that is in between. It's a temporal place. Temporal place. It's a place in between. It's, it's, where, it's where all the Old Testament saints went that yet did not go straight to heaven but went to this place right now. The Old Testament saints. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about uh, the place where, where, where literally it's the burning fire, but I'm talking about a place. It's a temporary place, temporary place. Jesus knew when I die, I got to do something. I got to set some people free when I go. I got to set some people free when I go. Come on, can you say amen? Let's look at the Bible. Come on, let's look at the Bible. Go with me quickly. Hallelujah to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Amen. Let's look at the, what the Bible says in Ephesians. Paul got revelation of Jesus. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, look for Ephesians in the margin of your Bible if you can't find it. We're here to learn the scripture. So look at Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Verses eight. Now let's focus in what he did when he died. What he did when he died before he resurrected. I want to see Jesus. I want to see. Tell me what you did. Those three days that you were gone, we know your spirit was alive. But I want to know what happened. What did you do? Uh, what happens to people? What happened to you, Father? Notice what it says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses eight. 
Wherefore, are you there? Wherefore, he said, when he ascended upon high, he led captive, captivity, captivity, captive. That's right where we're on a zero in right there. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, up on high, he led captivity, captive. Verses 10. He that descended, he that descended, which is Jesus, is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. That he descended is the same also that ascended far above. Say it would be far above. Now notice this. If you look at something, we find something here. So clear, so clear, so clear. Now with that same Thought in mind, go with me to Psalms. Now, we learn the Bible now. Psalms, the 68th chapter. Amen. I remember when I first got saved, I was so hungry for the Word, which I'm hungry now. I couldn't find anything. But I'm excited that, that you can still look to the index of the Bible. If you can't find Scripture, go to the index. I still do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Look what it says in Psalm 68, verses 18. Are you there? And notice this. The psalmist said this that confirms what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, talking about the ascension and the descension. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellion also that the Lord God might dwelt among them. So according to scripture, number one, Jesus went to a place that he told the thief on the cross, paradise. And what happened into paradise? He set people free. I want you to think about it. What happened to Abraham when he died? What happened to Moses when he died? What happened to the prophets when they died? What happened to Jacob when he died? What happened to Joseph when he died? Jesus was not there yet. In physical form, to die on the cross physically so that he can give us resurrection, where were they at? And yet we find Jesus had to come to bring resurrection. Jesus had to come to bring resurrection. Yes, we find that the many prophets resurrected, many that were dead, but then they died again. Come on, church, can you say amen? They died again. That's just like if, if I was to die and living in the Old Testament and a prophet resurrected me, well, praise God, I've been resurrected. But there still has to come a day in my life that I'm going to die. But here Jesus comes and brings a resurrection now, a power force to resurrect people. But he knew before he can do more of that resurrection, he has to set the Old Testament saints free. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. He's got to set them free. According to the word of God, when Jesus died, the Bible says on that ninth hour, which is three o'clock in the afternoon, the sky had an earthquake. The, the sky had a storm. The land had an earthquake. The temple at that, the, the veil at the temple ripped just completely ripped in two hallelujah amen and the bible says that the graves gave up the dead can you i want you to see this the dead think about it if you lived in a time and your father was an old testament or your grandfather was an old testament saint oh you he would resurrect out of that grave hallelujah amen he resurrected think about it they were seeing many the bible says many many saw many resurrect after him his death many were resurrected oh i believe it say with me i believe it hallelujah amen think about it if you're in jerusalem sad just heard that the master died on the cross and then all of a sudden you say there's father abraham walking there's jacob walking there's joshua walking Oh, my God, there's my grandfather walking. Oh, 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 the prophets are walking here. Hallelujah. Amen. See, something's happening here. Hallelujah. Amen. The power of the resurrected cross of Jesus. The power of his resurrection. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. The power of his resurrection. Say it with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want you to see something. Go with me to the book of Acts. Now, this is the Acts of the Apostles. Jesus Christ is already resurrected. Jesus Christ is already in heaven. 
And now the church is starting. The book of Acts talks about the beginnings of the church. But listen to what Peter said in Acts 2. Something so interesting he said in chapter 2. I want you to see this in chapter 2. Hallelujah. Amen. Chapter 2. Notice what he says. In verses 29. Now let's zero in. Now we can, we can read a lot, but we have to stay focused what we're talking about. What he did the moment that he died to the moment he resurrected. What he did those two, two days in the grave. What he did those two days. We know he resurrected on that third day, but I want to know what he did. Notice what it says in Acts, the second chapter, verses 29. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. The Bible says men and brethren. He's speaking here. Men and brethren, church. Let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the first of his loins, the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would wake Christ, the anointed one, to sit on the throne. See, they believe what David said, and David said this. David said this. Holy Spirit told in this scripture. Now notice this. He seen this before, spake of the resurrection. He seen this. Who is he talking about? David seen this. Say, stay with me, church. David seen what he's going to explain. Seeing that, that seeing this before he spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul, his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Now let's just stop here for a moment. What is he saying? He said it was promised that Jesus would resurrect, but it was also promised that this same Jesus would do something and he would not leave, God would not leave Jesus in hell. This is what we're talking about right here. This place, this temporal place. Come on, can you say amen? This temporal place. In other words, this is a temporal place. And Jesus had to go deliver these that were old time saints from this place, this temporal place. Come on, say with me. Amen. This temporal place had to be. Amen. And the Bible says once he delivered them, that settled it. That settled it. Amen. Now notice this. If you die today, where do you go? Immediately in the presence of God. There's no holding place. Now, there's some people that will teach there's holding places. No, you go straight to heaven. Pastor, what happens to someone that dies in the Lord? They go straight to heaven. What happens to someone that dies without the Lord? Doesn't go to heaven. Go straight to hell. Straight to hell. See, see, this is where the church needs to preach this, but yet doesn't preach it for the sake of, of not hurting somebody's feelings about hell. But listen, if the Bible talked about hell, if the Bible talks about prosperity, if the Bible talks about healing, if the Bible talks about water baptism, if the Bible talks about how to treat my wife, if the Bible talks how to treat my children, and the Bible talks how to children how to treat their fathers, come on, why leave out certain scripture when it's all truth? Come on, say with me, amen. Why well, leave out certain scripture? Pastor, I want to hear nothing about prosperity and money and money and money and money. Yeah, you do hear that from the word of God. But you also hear from the word of God, there's a place called hell. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, wow. There is a place called hell. Tell your other neighbor, wow. See, the reality of hell has not sinked because we have not understood it. The reality of hell has not really been given to us to understand. And you know what the fault is? The fault is, number one, we're not hearing the message of hell. And number two, we're not studying the word of God. I remember when I would read Revelation, it was the longest boring book in the whole Bible. But I found out when I got born again, this is the place that I need to study. This is the place that has my future. Amen. Come on. When I go somewhere and I travel, I want to know where I'm going. Hallelujah. Amen. I took my wife to California a couple years ago. I wanted to know exactly where we're going to spend the night, what highway, what we're going to eat. I want to know exactly what time I'm going to get somewhere. And I made it according to all the plan of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what I'm saying? I want to know. Think about it. You want to know. I mean, the people that came from Arlington, you guys just, just didn't come, uh, Sarah, Sarah. You had plans, right? You made plans, hallelujah, to be here, hallelujah, amen. How many of you made plans to be in church this morning? I can tell you, nice, looking nice this morning, amen, hallelujah. You made plans to be in church, amen. Come on, tell me, amen. amen. 
Y'all supposed to laugh at this, hallelujah. I'm trying to make it easy for you, hallelujah. Hell is, hell is a good word. Come on, church, amen. It's a good word for us that, that believe in Jesus, hallelujah, amen. Come on, amen. But it's a sad word for those that don't believe in the Lord. It really is. It really is. That's why you and I have some homework to do. We have to pray more for unbelievers. We got to intercede for people that don't know Jesus. We got to, you have family members that don't know Jesus. If you were to die, if they were to die this very moment, where would they spend eternity? This very moment, where would they spend eternity? Think about it. While we're in church, souls are entering into eternity. There's death out there. This morning I got up and sing, she, uh, how do you pronounce it, uh, Sri Lanka. Did you read about that this morning? Some people went into a church and killed Christians. A hundred and something died. Uh, uh, you know, many died this morning. Why? The number's up as of today. What's the number? Do you know the number? How much? 200? What happened? On this day, on this day. You know, I, I, I believe all of them were, I hope all of them were believers. All of them were believers. Amen. It's a sad situation when that happens. But notice this, notice this. If you go to the book of Psalms now. Psalms, the 16th chapter. Psalms, the 16th chapter. And I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Bible. All Psalms now, the psalmist is now confirming what you read in Acts 2. So when Paul, Peter, excuse me, Peter said what he said in chapter 2, verses 29, all he was saying was rehearsing the prophet in the psalmist. Psalm 16, verses 10. Are you there? The Amplified Bible says this, For you will not abandon me to Sheol. That's the place of hell. The neither world, the place of the dead, nor will you allow your Holy One to go or to undergo decay. All he's saying, all he's repeating is what the psalmist said. All he's repeating is Jesus is going to do a job, but God promises that he's not leaving Jesus there. In fact, he's not leaving him in that place, Shoel, which is called hell, and he's not letting his body decay. Now think about that. When they went to go get the body of Jesus, listen to this, his body wasn't there. Come on, church. Come on, he wasn't there. The grave was empty. Amen. Where was his body? Where was his body? He was doing some business. He was doing some business. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Where is Jesus now? In spirit and also in bodily form. Where is Jesus now? In spirit. He's at the right hand of a father. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about it. The first man, the first man to ever live is in heaven for you right now. Made the way for you to go. Come on. The first man. The first man born of, a, of, of Mary. Physically, fleshly, coming from the loins of David. Come on, church. This Jesus that you and I are worshiping today, this Jesus, he is resurrected, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's coming back. We're coming to see him. We're going to be caught up in the air. We're out of here, church. We're going to see Jesus face to face. But right now, we're loving on him truthfully in our hearts because we believe in this. We believe in the word. We believe what he's saying, and we can sense him. I feel Jesus now. How many people can feel Jesus now? I feel the Lord now. Come on. I feel the Lord now. What is it when you feel those things? It's it's Jesus in our presence. What is it when you're praying and you feel the Holy Ghost? Jesus is in our presence. What is it? Have you ever had the nighttime alone crying, seeking God? And all of a sudden you go to God and all of a sudden it feels like someone walked into that room and you turn around and no one's there. But yet you feel the shift of an atmosphere, something pleasant. Uh, you know, quite a few times I smelled beautiful flowers in my room. Oh, I remember one time at the hotel in California, Christina, I went to a funeral and I was going to do a funeral. But I, I was just praying to the Holy Ghost, praying to the Holy Ghost. And I looked around and I said, honey, did you just put on some perfume? It smelled like flowers. She says, no. She said, oh my God, I can smell it. Oh my God, I can smell it. Oh my God, I can smell it. And it just lifted. Then it went back to smelling like a hotel. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. Went to the funeral, the same thing. Now notice that the flowers of the funeral are not the same thing as what, what I smelled in my spirit. But see, those are things. I smelled the spirit of God. One day I was praying all by myself here. And, and I, I, could, I could tell you, I thought I heard people talking in this building. And it was a talk of excitement, talk of, uh, and I wanted to hear it. It just disappeared. 
And I said, oh, God, I, I know you're in this presence. I know you're in this place. I can feel you. Things, you can sense the Lord. Come on, church. Have you know what I'm talking about? Come on. You can be driving down the highway, and you're by yourself. I remember driving many times by myself. Jesus sitting next to me. Oh, I could just, I could just feel Jesus. Come on, church. I'm not, I'm not high on drugs. I'm telling you. I sense Jesus. Hallelujah. I sense him a lot. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. You can sense him, too. He's living. He's alive. The Bible says he's with us, he's among us, and he's in us. Come on, church, hallelujah, amen. Right now, we're giving him glory, hallelujah, amen. Can you say hallelujah? 